Welcome everyone to Calvary Church of Annapolis. My name is Conrad Link and I'm delighted you're with us today as we celebrate in worship God is love and in particular celebrating Valentine's Day. I have dressed in my favorite 1970s game show host outfit so that we begin our service with a little bit of a game. I'm going to give you two choices. Two choices, and I want you to pick which is your favorite. It's just for fun, just to begin this day to relax and enjoy and be in each other's presence and be in the presence of God. Ready? You're going to choose one of these two choices just for fun. Which do you love? You ready? Here we go. Which do you love? Chocolate or lollipops? Which do you want? Soda or juice? Are you a singer or a dancer? Do you watch comedy or drama? You ready to eat? Do you want pizza or burgers? Are you a cat person or a dog person? Which would you like to wear, silver or gold? Here we are in Annapolis. Are you a motorboat person or a sailboat person? Are you a fan of wizards or ninjas? Which do you want? Popcorn or ice cream? Tater tots or french fries? Do you like to work on a laptop or a tablet? And how about, are you going to the beach or to the mountains? Now share these choices with each other. Laugh and enjoy and em embrace one another and care for one another. If you're by yourself watching this, call somebody and share what we're doing in church today. This is the day we worship God, the God who has given us the gift of love. Come on, join me in our worship today. Let's go. Hello, everyone, and welcome once again to today's worship service. I hope you enjoyed that opening prelude on the tune of Jesus Loves Me. For many of us, that was one of the very first songs where we realized that God loves me, Jesus loves me, for the Bible tells me so. My name is Ryan Ferguson, media, music, and worship connector here at Calvary, and I'm here to introduce to you the music in today's service. Today, it's all about the gift of love, the love that God has for us, the love that we have in return for God, and the love that God calls us to share with our brothers and sisters in this world. You're going to hear timeless favorites. You're going to hear new songs, and you're also going to hear a song that's not as well known. You'll hear Love Divine, All Love's Excelling, and Oh, How I Love Jesus, You'll hear Amazing Grace with a bit of a twist called Broken Vessels. You'll also hear a song called You Say, 
which is all about how God tells us we are loved, even if maybe we don't believe it. You're also going to hear a wonderful song called, O Come Thou Traveler Unknown, where there is someone who is wrestling with the call of God, only to discover at the end of the song that this wrestling that's taking place is with love itself. You can imagine that these songs in today's service are almost like singing Valentine's grams that we offer to God. We hope that you enjoy the music today and the worship today as we celebrate the gift of love.
Please join me in our community prayer. Almighty and most gracious God, you have made us in your own divine image and have redeemed us through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Look with compassion and love upon the whole human family. Take away our mistrust of one another and fill our hearts with joy. Break down the walls and barriers that separate us and put within us a new spirit of brotherhood and sisterhood. Unite us in bonds of love and peace so that the struggles many carry will be lifted from their shoulders. Finally, may your Holy Spirit bring harmony to this world so that your kingdom will come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. With the confidence of children of God, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Again, everyone and welcome to News to Know. First off today we would like to extend a heartfelt thank you and great job to everyone who participated in our Super Bowl Sunday food drive. On February the 7th Troop 366 and others gathered to load and haul over 3,000 pounds worth of food to the Lighthouse Shelter here in Annapolis. This was all made possible through your generosity and support of this mission, and we thank you. This coming Tuesday is Shrove Tuesday, and we are hosting here at Calvary a drive through pancake supper. We invite you all to RSVP to reserve your plate. We, the staff, will be cooking and serving between 6 and 7 p.m. That reservation form can be found on our website, calumc.org, or you can call into the office to reserve your plates. The following day will be Ash Wednesday. We have three opportunities for you to come on campus to receive ashes. That will be 9 to 10 a.m., noon to 1, and 6 to 7 p.m. for those who are working. That same day, we will also have an online worship service, an Ash Wednesday worship service, where several other churches in the Annapolis community have come together to join in this Lenten journey together. 
That service will be on our YouTube channel as well as our website at noon for you to watch at your convenience. Last but not least, as it pertains to the Ash Wednesday service, if you would like to be a part of our Ash Wednesday virtual choir, there is still time. Today is the last day to submit your recording for our Ash Wednesday virtual choir. If you get me a recording, you will see yourself in the service next Wednesday. If you have any questions about any of these items, please reach out to us here at the office. If you have any questions about the virtual choir, you can reach me at musicdirector at calumc.org. That's all we have for news to know. Back to the service. Hear now these two selections of the letters in the New Testament to early Christians, teaching them about the importance of love and the understanding that God is love. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It's not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in all of us, and his love is perfected in us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God from whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. But what if we could love the way Jesus did? Passionately, faithfully, powerfully. What if the way we love could make a difference in the world around us? What if that love looked at everyone the way God does? A love which doesn't see the past, but is consumed by a desire to see people come to know Jesus. A love which is patient and kind, not envious or prideful. A love which puts others before ourselves, chooses peace over anger, love which protects, trusts, hopes, perseveres. Do we love like this? Do we love like Jesus? Maybe it's time to ask a simple question. How can we love better? Hear now these selected verses from the Gospel of John that teach us about God's love and God's call for us to love one another. 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's begin today with a story that is a Hebrew folk tale that talks about the quality of love. It's the story of two brothers. There were once two brothers who farmed together. They shared equally of all the work and split all the profits, exactly the same. Each had his own granary. One of the brothers was married and had a large family, and the other brother was single. One day, the single brother thought to himself, It is not fair that we divide the grain evenly. My brother has many mouths to feed, while I have but one. I know what I'll do. I will take one sack of grain from my granary each evening and put it in my brother's granary. So each night when it was dark, he carefully carried a sack of grain and placed it in his brother's barn. Now the married brother said to himself, It is not fair that we divide the grain evenly. I have many children to care for me in my old age, and my brother has none. I know what I will do. I will take one sack of grain from my granary each evening, and put it in my brother's granary. And that's what he did. Each morning the two brothers were amazed to discover, though they had each removed a grain of sack from their barn, they still had just the same amount. One night the two brothers met each other halfway between their barns, each carrying a sack of grain towards the other. Then they understood the mystery, and they embraced, and each loved each other deeply. This is a story, a legend, that says God looks down from heaven and saw these two brothers embracing, and says, I declare that this is a holy place, for I have witnessed extraordinary love here. It is the place, so legend has it, that Solomon builds his magnificent temple. Now I share that story with you because it's a story of love, of brother and brother, loving and caring for one another. It is what the Greeks refer to as love, storge. That's the Greek word storge. 
It means the natural affection of blood relatives one for the other, brother to brother, sister to sister, parent to child, child to parent. It's the natural biological love. Now I know you like, like me, when I first read this, I thought to myself, oh, well, this is a story about filial love. I mean, after all, we've all learned that Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love, which there is some debate if that's actually true or not. Nevertheless, filial is, is about brotherly love. Well, that's a little different. This is about storge, about the natural love that families, biological families have for each other. And in the Greek, it's different than filial love. Filial love is a decided love of a non-biological person for a non-biological person, loving and caring, respecting one another, and making a commitment in brotherhood and sisterhood, one to the other. Today, I simply want to talk about love. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time into the Greek definitions. You can look that up uh, all on your own and discover there's all kinds of different words referred to love. But let's talk about what love is. After all, today is Valentine's Day. According to Doc, Father Frank O'Grary out of Dublin and Friars Street Church, the legend of Valentine goes something like this. Valentine was a priest in the church in the mid-200s. He lived under the time of the Roman Empire and Claudius II was the emperor. As a priest, Valentine sought to minister to the needs of the people of his city. One of the things that made Claudius II so difficult to work with, with the church and him, was that Claudius was still part of the Roman Empire that wanted to expand the Roman Empire and he needed to wage war. And in order to wage war, he had to have army. And he discovered that his army was better suited if the men in the army were single as opposed to married. And so he forbid marriage. Well, Valentine was part of the early church trying to spread the gospel and teach the importance of making, uh, making a commitment to a spouse and having one man and one woman in relationship. And in that relationship, Valentine was willing to do secret weddings. Because not only did Claudius II forbid marriage and didn't want any married folks, but he made it a crime that if you were the person marrying people, you could be thrown into prison. Well, Valentine was arrested. He was thrown into prison. He was tortured and lived there for a long time as a prisoner of the state. But Valentine kept his ministry going. Legends grew as to how he ministered to other people in prison. He would send them notes he would offer prayers. He would give times of healing and bring messages of hope. Towards the end of his life, before he finally was executed, according to the priest, Valentine would write messages and sign the message from your Valentine, meaning from him. And legend grew that this was the way that he showed God's love and care for one another. Well, Father O'Grady summarizes the message of Valentine by saying, you know, there comes a time in every person's life that you have to stand up or you have to lay down your life for what you truly think is important, what is true and essential to you. For Valentine, it was that love conquers all. Even in the time of approaching death, love conquers all. And he wanted to live as a model of love even in prison. Well, Jesus was saying this very thing to us when Jesus said, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. 
No one has greater love than this, than he lay down his life for one of his friends. You did not choose me, Jesus says, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. I am giving you this commandment so that you may love one another. When I think of love and all the times I've talked about love in the life of the church and, and sermons and, and so on, I think of a, a man that lived back in the 60s and 70s by the name of Leo Bascalia. He was a wonderful, filled with life educator and author and speaker. And they put together some of his wonderful lectures as he traveled the world giving lectures about living fully, living fully human, living fully human in love with the world and with one another. And in his collections of lectures titled Living, Loving, and Learning, Bascalia tells this story about love. He says, you know, love is learned. That's right. Love is learned. Fear is learned. Prejudice is learned. Hate is learned. Concern is learned. Responsibility is learned. Kindness and gentleness are learned. Love is learned. All of these are learned in a society, in our homes, in our families, in our schools, in our relationships. And Pascal goes on to say that these concepts must be taught deliberately if we really want to change the world and to live fully with one another. We have to, as a young age, at a young age, learn these concepts, practice these concepts, fulfill these concepts. Otherwise, love will be lost. Hate will grow. Concern will be missing. Responsibility will be lacking. Kindness and gentleness will be lost. But if we can learn to love the deepness and fullness of love, then life and love can grow. Love is patient, Paul, the apostle says. Love is kind. Love is not envious, nor boastful, nor arrogant, or rude. Love is learned and experienced and grows. Pascalia also goes on to say when he was quoting a man that he interviewed one time, an 85-year-old man as he approached the twilight of his life. He asked the man what he would have liked to do different. And the first thing the man said, I wish I loved more. He goes on to say, I wish I'd loved more and worry less. I wish I'd loved more and not worried about the mistakes I made. I wouldn't try to be so perfect. I'd relax more, be silly more, I'd, I'd take more chances, I'd climb more mountains, swim more rivers, watch more sunsets. I would love more. C.S. Lewis says, what the world needs is love that fulfills us and marks us and sends us forth to love one another. But C.S. Lewis also says this curious thing, you know, if you love, you will get hurt. If you love, you will get hurt. If you open your heart and love, you will get your heart broken from time to time. If you open yourself and love, sometimes that love will not be returned. If you really pour out your love for others, Sometimes it will not be returned. So C.S. Lewis in the writing says, so if you want to make sure that your heart is never broken and that your love is never squandered, your love is never disappointed, he says, I know how to help you. He says, if you want to make sure that your love is never broken, do not give your heart away. Keep your heart only to yourself. If you don't ever want your heart broken, avoid all entanglement in life. Lock your heart away like in a safe or in a coffin. 
Keep in mind, if you lock it up, your heart will change. It will not be broken. That's true. It will become unbreakable, impenetrable, irredeemable. It will be safe and dark and motionless and airless. But it will never be broken. Well, that's a pretty sad way to live. C.L. Lewis is not inviting us to be that way, but he's saying to us the truth that if you are afraid of ever getting your heart broken, you will never fully live and you will never fully love. And one of the great gifts of life is to fully love and to be embraced and to embrace. And what is really wonderful about love is that if you can really move to the fullest dimensions of love, you can embrace others whether that love is returned or not. And here is when we move into the great writing in the New Testament, in the first letter of John to the early church in the fourth chapter, where John speaks to us with clarity that God is love. And he says this, Beloved, let us love one another, Because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. And this is love. Not that we loved God first, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loves us so much, we ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. You know, let's bring our time of worship and sermon to a close for the moment and consider that this gift of God is love is an example of what the Greeks called agape love, unconditional love of God for us and the goal for us to return that unconditional love love to God by loving one another. You know, this is the exact opposite of locking your heart away. Unconditional love is giving love whether love is returned or not. It makes your arms go wider and wider and embrace. It makes you vulnerable. It makes you open. It makes you fully willing to invest yourself. It does leave you open for harm. But if you're fully embraced by the unconditional love of God for you, you cannot live any way else but by loving. It is a love of God and a love for God and a love for God's world that we are called to do and to be. When Jesus says to us, I command you to love one another. So, friends, in celebration of Valentine. Let's try to outdo each other in loving one another. Let's illustrate not just by word, but by deed, by the very way we live our lives, that love means something to us. And let's love those people who don't have anybody else to love them. Let's live our lives as a valentine, a living valentine of God's love. For God is love. God's love is in you, ready to show forth. Now here's what I want you to do as we conclude this day. At the end of this message, ah, if you're watching this video with someone, turn to them and say, God's love is in you, God loves you, and I love you. If you're watching this by yourself, pick up the phone, 
Punch in that number and call a relative, a friend, a neighbor, a sister, a son or daughter. Call somebody and say, the preacher said for me to say to you, God loves you and I love you. You know what? Well, maybe you're going to go shopping this afternoon and you go to the store and you're getting all your stuff and it's kind of busy and, and as you're checking out, don't go through the self-checkout. Go through a line where somebody's actually there and say to them, you know what I learned today in church? That God's love is in you and that God is love and that I love you. You don't even have to quote me. Make it your own idea. That'd be awesome. Sometime throughout this day or week or month or year, look for opportunities to say, God is love. God's love is in you. God's love is in me. I love you. May it be so. Amen. Let us prepare now to give of our gifts and tithes. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, bless both the gift and the giver this day as we return to you a portion of what you have given us. Use both gift and giver 
for the building of your kingdom and the spreading of your love throughout the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
So we're really glad that you have been with us today in our time of worship. May God continue to bless you and keep you. May God surround you with God's presence. And may God's love be ever true to you. As we prepare to go out into this week, I hope that you'll be with us on Wednesday of this week. Wednesday starts Ash Wednesday. We have a community service. It'll be live on our website. So I hope that you'll turn into that. We'll also be getting the season of Lent. And next Sunday we start a Lenten series about listening and tuning in and listening with our heart, soul, mind, and strength to the magnificence of God. So journey with us through the season of Lent. God is love. God's love lives in you. I love you. I also like lollipops, french fries, and the beach. See you next week. Bye.